Okay, guys, I think we're going to get started. Are you guys ready? Sure. Let's get started. Um, so some of you don't know me. I'm Jeff Marchant, the Marchant Real Estate Group at EXP. This is my office. Welcome. Thank you. I, just, I love seeing new faces in here. And thanks for waiting. We're in name tag so I can figure out who you are. <laughs> uh, so um, I'm going to have Ashley actually come up and introduce Talia. Um, a lot of you already know her, but some of you don't. So Ashley, come on up. I think I've already shared the screen, right? Do you guys see her slide? You see in the screen? Okay, good. Kathy gave me a thumbs up. Ashley, come on up and yep. we're, we're going to get started. So again, welcome guys and uh, let's get going. Hey everybody. I am super excited to introduce Talia. We actually met, she was a coach for my mom and I, and she is just so enthusiastic, full of life, with a lot of energy, and she's a keynote speaker for businesses. She also is mindset and body coach. She's got her own business. And she's also got two different podcasts, which I think is really amazing. But we've just had a great time connecting and we're super excited to have her in here. So come on up, Ted. All right. Come on up. Here's your look like here. All right. So this is this is your view right here. So you got your little paper ring. And that's okay. this one. That one right there. Yeah, you got amazing. amazing. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So if any of you guys have ever been in a group or in a setting where you felt like you wanted to say something or you had a comment that you just didn't have the confidence to share. Yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. I know. Your energy introduces you before you even speak. I want to tell you a little story. This is me when I was a baby. And my mom, <laughs> so cute. my mom had this gut feeling that the day that I was going to be born, that something was wrong. And I was two weeks early. And she went into the doctors and said, this baby is coming and she's coming. <laughs> and they didn't really believe her at that point. And so she just said, something's wrong. Well, come to find out I was coming and I was coming breach and I was coming very, very quickly. And it was so traumatic for her that she kind of even like placed up a little bit. And my dad was like, come on, you gotta do this. And they had four steps and they were trying to pull me out. And she opened up her eyes just in time for me to look up and I had these big eyes and I made a little tiny squawk and here I was. I just came into the world as this confident, confident little girl. And so by the time I was 11 months old, she tells another story about me in the blue dress. I was at the restaurant and I was walking around and I was so engaged with people that they were, they were took my apron and were filling it up with quarters, like just loading me up, which was awesome right so we went back to my mom and I had been so engaging with people that by the time they were so invested with me but by the time I opened my mouth to speak I was talking at 11 months and I was saying who is it what's that and they were they were engaged because my energy had already introduced me in the beginning now um have you heard that quote don't let anybody do your short mm -hmm. it's like that one I love that because there's something about little kids that just have this confidence that totally exudes. And it's funny, I have a little four-year-old and she looks just like that. That's not her, but she does look like that. And my husband happened to get this video of her. We're a big sports fan. My daughter plays volleyball. And it was really amazing because all of a sudden the song comes on. We've got hundreds of people in the bleacher and my cute little daughter decides that she's going to do this. So I hit the middle button on here. Is that what I do to play it? Uh, is this from the video? Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I, I don't think you guys can hear the sound. I want to share the sound. Oh, Hold on. it's great. Uh, I just stopped. I know that's going to be scary. okay. Time out, technical difficulties. Pretend this isn't happening, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is. So, there, here's sound. Here. Let's do it again. Here is Kalia at the volleyball game. So she just has no fear, right? So what it is about these kids that aren't afraid at all to just be themselves because they're not afraid of, you know, the thoughts and the worries. They don't care because that confidence becomes more natural to kids. Well, until the time I was about eight years old, I wanted to show you guys another picture. It was one of those old school pictures where, you know, you're smiling in the photo, but then there's the other shadow. Have you guys seen those? They're really old school. I don't know if it's even old enough, but the shadow is like a different picture. And so one of them I'm smiling as this cute little eight year old. And then in the other one, it's like I have a serious face. So it's super funny. But um, until like the time I was about eight, I just kind of exuded with that confidence. I came out that way. That's who I was. That's how my nature was, just similar to this. 
Until about, about eight years old, there were some struggles in my family. We were going through some mental health. We had some addiction issues in the past in the family. And I was the oldest of four kids. And truly, I knew there was really nothing I could do. I was trying to fix it all, but when you're eight, you can't. So I turned to a solution that worked for me, which was food. Food was a comfort to me. I ate when I was happy, and I ate when I was sad, and when I was lonely. And as a result of that, I ended up, as a sophomore, gaining um, 80 pounds. And at this point, I was so miserable in my life. I still had light in me, and I tried to be happy and joyful, but that little girl had, had shrunk. She was, I didn't feel that confidence. I didn't get asked on dates to the dances. I stayed in my house. Most days I came home to my um, chips and my Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I would just sit there and feel sorry for myself. And I realized that I was like, I don't like this. And I saw someone in my neighborhood that was very confident. As a sophomore, you look up to older people and she was a senior. She was losing weight. She had this glow about her. And I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to ask her. I'm going to ask her for secrets. And so I did. And she told me the most simple things, but it was, I drink more water. I exercise every day. I am um, eating the most simple things. I eat more fruits and vegetables and I eat less sugar and flour. Do we all know that? No. <laughs> but somehow, <laughs> somehow I like took this in. I was like, this is gold. This is who I want to be. This is how I want to show up. And I did it every day. And I tried to, to tell myself that I was going to become that person. You know, I tried to, to, to gear my mind. I'm realizing at that point how powerful my mind was. Um, by the time I was a junior, I was able to lose 76 pounds and start a new high school. And I had such a different experience with my confidence, even though I still felt kind of broken in the inside and I still had my issues as that little girl. People treated me differently when I was there. All of a sudden, I was nominated for junior prom queen or was a homecoming queen. I got asked at dances. I was on going to dates. I'm like, this is really cool, you know? Um, I made the soccer team, I tried out for the track team, and things and experiences changed. And I kept thinking in my mind, well, people like me better if I'm thin, so how am I going to do this? How am I going to stay this way, right? With this internal conflict in my brain. And so I kept the weight under control for a while. I met my husband. Luckily, he didn't know me. <laughs> the older ones. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. One thing I really love and appreciate is when I even go back to these pictures, um, he would say to me, I don't remember you like that. I don't remember you 80 pounds. I don't remember that. I just remember you. And that that was really beautiful to me because as time went on, um, I did I did have some weaknesses happen where I gained the weight back again. So I was trying to conceive a baby and we had some infertility issues. And I had 10 pregnancies to get my four kids. And so we have 19 all the way to four years old. And in that process, every time I would lose a baby, I lost twins before my son, it brought me right back to that little girl. It brought, brought me right back to feeling like I, I wasn't enough, I was a failure, and I ate. I ate for comfort, I ate for joy, I ate to save my baby, and I thought, I'll eat whatever I need to so I can have this little baby. <clears throat> I ended up with a son, that's my little Caden, we were up in Bear Lake, that was me, 83 pounds after I had eaten to try to protect him. And that's me one year from the time he was born. And I had made a decision that I was going to try to run a marathon. And I got that crazy idea. I'm going to run a marathon. I'm going to do these drastic things. I did it in high school. I can do it again. And, and I ran that marathon. And I remember my husband standing there really questioning, can I do that? Like he was trying to protect me saying, you know, this is a big thing. We're not sleeping. Having a baby is a ton of work, you know. And um, being able to lose that weight felt amazing. I just had no idea that there would be a total of five times in my life that I would gain 80 pounds and then lose 80 pounds. One thing that I realized through this process is that when you believe in yourself, other people believe in you too. One thing I want to share about confident people is they're not born confident, right? Confident people make a decision to be confident. They make a decision that they're going to try to be confident, that they're going to believe in themselves. Does that resonate with anybody? It's a choice to believe that. So I want to share something that just happened that's really, really tender to me <laughs> because I'm like, I'm sharing it all with you guys today. But here's the deal. I was, my friend Liz was here, so she got to witness the whole thing. 
Last week, I got to go to speak at an amazing event. There was over 400 employees that were there, and they were planning on me as their keynote speaker. And I learned a lot. I was trying to figure out slides and do converting and, and everything that had happened. So there was a lot of things that came, but for some reason, I was particularly nervous to get on stage. That's not typically me. So there must have been some morning signs there. But what ended up happening was I went to go and they were handing me off the clicker. And right when I went to get on stage, I had this feeling that said, hey, you joke around. I like a thought. You better joke around about the confidence clicker. I'm like, well, what's the confidence clicker? Like, what does this even mean? So I get on stage. They bring me out because I'm going to be speaking about confidence and communication. They bring me out to that music, Confident. I can't even remember her name, but it's like that song. But um, it's like, uh, what's wrong with being confident? You know that one? And everybody was like on their feet and clapping and having like an amazing time. So the energy's high. It felt amazing. I came out there and I look in front of me because it's like really fancy how they have the screens. And I realized in the moments with the slides ahead of me, that not only are my slides completely out of order, that they're all corrupt. Like the words are missing down for me. The letters were missing, right? Mm -hmm. Could you even read it from where you were? It was, no, it was hard to put it together. Like, you know, when you read something and there's like spaces and then there's wrong words and you're trying to decipher what it said, that's what it was. And they were up and below, like if you have dyslexia, I have a daughter with dyslexia, but it was absolutely crazy because people were squinting and looking. And in that moment, as I came out with my big sentence and I'm trying to show up with this confidence, I'm realizing this is a mess. And I thought, okay, what does my husband always tell me? When I try not to be funny, I'm really funny. Okay, so in my head, I'm like, don't be funny. Just try not to be funny, right? And then I, I was like, okay, I know they're messed up. It took me back for a minute and I just paused. And I was like, okay, just be real with me. I was like, all right, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start over here because my slides are a mess. And we're gonna just have some fun here with this confidence clicker. We're gonna see what's gonna happen because I have no clue. And so as we went through, my videos were on the side. They were like, I looked over and there's like 400 people like looking at this. I mean, it was, uh, it was a wreck. <laughs> I thought it was a wreck, but I just kept going through it and trying to be as confident as I could and be as real as I could because people, we get it, right? We're real people trying to figure our lives out, trying to learn how to be confident, trying to love ourselves for where we are. And so I just showed up in that energy. I didn't blame anybody. I couldn't blame myself. I should have been there early. Should have been in charge of my own slides. All of that. But I, did, I chose not to. So I want to take a moment to tell you what happened at the end. I got off the stage. I, I, I literally, and this is a vulnerable moment for me. I stepped back there and I thought, oh, well, I don't want to go out there. I don't want them to see me. You know, those moments you want to shrink and hide. That's where I was. And... I just thought, okay, get over it, you know? <laughs> so I, I stepped out and I have like two people right there. And one of them was like, that was so good. That was so authentic. And Liz knew one of the owners, my girl, good friend there. And he came up to me after he was like in charge of the whole company. He's like, everything was a mess, but it was so good. Like every one of your presentations should be like that because, it, because people paid attention and they got it and it was so great. And so I thought, well, at least he's happy, you know? And then I had someone else pull me aside. I thought this one was kind of funny. They, they said they've been on over 3,000 stages. He's like, so how many times have you had everything fail and, and on, in your presentations? And I'm thinking, I said, well, this is the first like time that everything went wrong. And he just looked at me and he said, I've never, ever believed. You came across with such grace. You showed such confidence. You were, you were smiling. You were joking. And that was the thing I realized. When I tried not to be funny, everyone was like laughing. Like, I dropped something, a piece, a little earpiece, didn't an earpiece fell out of my ear. And all of a sudden I just tried to be honest, but like, this is ridiculous. But the thing was, they were laughing, we were having fun. And I said, well, this is my first time. And he said, well, you never know. Then I had another gal come up from New Jersey that was in the back and she just said, so how long have you been doing stand-up comedy and improv? Uh, <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> And she just says, well, because some of the things we learned in Jersey is, you know, what you were doing and how you were distracting. And anyway, it, it really, it really made me feel better in the fact that not that I needed validation, but that people didn't need it to be perfect. The one that hit me the most was the woman that came up to me almost in tears. And she said, watching the way you did that presentation, how everything went wrong, 
makes me realize that in life, I can step forward and fail. If I, if I need to fail, like just trying, it's okay. Because you gave me permission that things don't look good. And at the end, you still got the message through. When people feel what you're trying to share with them and you're authentic, and you can connect with them that way, it doesn't matter if it goes perfect, right? So I want to share another experience because we're getting so real here mm -hmm. about the real estate test. Now, how many of you guys taken the real estate test in here? How many? Okay, good amount. <laughs> I've got a few smiles in the back, like, oh, okay, what story am I going to tell here? Well, here it is. When COVID went kind of crazy, I got a wild hair. My husband always said to me, hey, you would be an awesome real estate agent. I'm like, I would? Oh, great. I got lots of power on the back. I said, well, I love people. And, um, and I thought, well, why not do it? It's COVID. And so I got a hold of my brother-in-law and he said, you know what, go through Stringham, they're the best. And so I got online and I started taking the classes. And, you know, it was such a crazy world. Kids were home, um, doing, you know, doing work online. And it was just such a weird time. And I thought, I'm going to do this. Well, little did I know, my little brother had just went ahead and had done this before me. So he was like, probably five months further ahead of me. And so he, I was getting close to getting down and getting ready to take the test. And he had started to take this test. He calls me up. He's like, you're not going to believe it. He's like, first try. I, I passed this thing. I'm so excited. And I was like, yes. You know, I was like so excited. Well, all of a sudden, something inside me got a little nervous. And I said, hey, if I don't pass it the first time, like, you know, just don't judge me, okay? I think I said something like that. And he looked at me and he said, don't worry. I didn't pass it. He said, you've always done great in school. He's like, look, I passed it my first time. And I didn't even love school or whatever, you know? And so that was a little pressure right there because I thought to myself about that. You're amazing. I'm getting wet and dry throat. I never thought that happened. Thank you so much. Great body language. Check that out. I'm just talking about that a little bit. Your lips were stuck to your teeth. So. Thank you. <laughs> just kidding. That, that was part of the stand-up that they said, you know, make sure teeth and lips stick together. It's okay. okay, so here's the cool thing is I had that doubt creep in, but I thought, I'm going to nail this, right? I've had a lot of setbacks in my life, but really, truly, gaining and losing that weight 80 pounds, losing 10, you know, having 10 pregnancies to get those four kids, going through those trials and tribulations helped me become a stronger person, better person. Things I could be like, I'm going to take it on, you know? I got this. I figured it out. So to me, this real estate test was nothing. I'm, like, I'm going to get it, you know? I go in to take the test. Feel like I was doing pretty well, and I walk out and I get my paper. And if you know this, if you get one sheet of paper that prints out, it's not good news. Anybody know that? Maybe not. Maybe you guys are first timers. It prints out and says that it was that I felt it. And I thought, really stung, you know. And that one that hurt. But I called my husband. I don't think I had told my my brother yet or any family. But then after a week, I said, I'll let him know because everybody knows I'm taking it. But I'm just going to do it again. I want to take it within a week. So I called up, tried to get scheduled around the area, went back in, studied hard, worked harder and harder on it, and took it again. And I felt it again. And then it sunk in a little bit. I thought, wow, I just felt it again, both of them again. And somehow I went back to that little girl. I went back to that pain and to that, that emotion eating and then the weight that I had put on and every time I miscarried the baby, right? Somehow that failure was tied to all the failures. And I just really struggled. I didn't want to do it again. And I thought, okay, I'm, I'm going to do it again in two days, okay? Because there was this rule, right? The rule was you had to get done with that test after like a certain amount of time. And I procrastinated a little bit because it was it was such a busy time. And um, at that, you know, in COVID. And so I was at my later, at my end. I went back in two days later. I told my husband, I said, we're gonna go out. I have this kind of this cool game room off the pool. I'm like, I'm spending the night out there. I'm like, no kids can talk to me. I'm grinding, you know? And then, and then with my ADHD, I would like squirrel and get sidetracked and get back on track, get back on track. And I would study and study and study. Well, the next day, and at this time, being super vulnerable, we had a son that was a little bit, um, just a little bit challenging at the time. He had some ADHD, just like the rest of the family. 
He'd had many concussions due to sports, and there were spikes of emotions, especially in these teenage boys. And so it kind of emotionally would set me off. And um, I just said, I'm going out here and I'm going to do it. But sometimes I think I carried a lot of emotions at that time that I didn't realize they came back. I went to take that test again, and the one page printed out. And at the top, it said failed. Well, as I, and I just, at that point, it just like, okay, I'm not silly. I look down at the bottom and I see the Utah law portion. And it says in little tiny words, I passed. I was like, I passed the law. Wait, you see, that's the hardest one. Okay, I passed the law. That's really good. If I can pass the law, I can do the other one. So I kept working through this. And I just, I'll make this a little bit shorter in the fact that my time had lapsed. I knew that if I wanted to get my real estate license, they had a window because all these rules, six months that I was supposed to retake the test. And what ended up happening was I had to retake all the courses through Stringham again. I went through every single one of them. I paid again for the courses, went back in to take the test. So this was great study. You can did you yeah. want a mashed or baked potato uh, and some <laughs> cut cheese on it? You like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so right. Oh, oh, okay, so I don't even know where I was except for I went. To, anyone want to help me? But you went through office. all of the classes again. Oh, I went through everything. I went through all the classes again. I was ready. I was going home. I'm not getting home. If I can do what I did before, I'm not quitting, right? And I have this, you know, Riley's never quit. <laughs> and I thought, I'm not going to quit on this. So I went through them again. And I thought, I have that window of time. I got one test passed. I can just do the other. Well, I went through and took the generals five more times. Five times. And felt it every single time. And every single time I felt it, a part of me chipped away. And every time I'd get back up and I'd try it again, I'd try it again. It was, it was excruciating. I can't even begin to tell you. One day I went to a retreat. I love to coach and teach people about the brains and the mind. That's what's helped me be successful and never, ever gaining my 80 pounds back again. It's our thoughts. There were about 30 coaches from the life coach school. If anybody knows how people coach the life coach school, they're amazing. But here's the deal. They ask you deep questions. You have to process. It is like, can be like crazy. And I was standing there and I told about this experience. I'd happened to take that test before and that was my ninth time taking that test. And I, she looked me in the eyes and I'll never forget. She said, do you want to be a real estate agent? And I said, well, yeah, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I'm called to do. This is what I'm going to do. And the tears were streaming down. And I said, I want to have investments. I love people. I want... I want to inspire people. I want to, I don't know if I want to be a real estate agent. And in that moment, I realized, because my test, you guys, it's not like I just failed and failed them. I would get 68 and 69% every time. We're talking one or two questions off. Subconsciously, I was somehow sabotaging myself, right? But what ended up happening is I realized, well, what if my son came to me and said he was in college? And later on, he did. So this was really ironic. But he was going down a path. And he said, Mom, this isn't right. Like, I don't think I want to do this. What would I say to him? What would I say to my own child? Would I say, well, you're going to do it. You finish what you start. Or make a shift. You do what you love. You do what you want. In that moment, I realized, I'm going to have to do some scary things here. I'm going to have to own who I want to be a real estate agent, first of all. And second of all, I'm going to go up to my husband. I'm going to tell him. I've spent thousands of dollars. Really, a couple thousand for string them and all those tests at what 60 a pop <laughs> and all the time and energy. And I learned a lot, you guys. But what I want to say is I have to tell him that I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not going to die. So I did. I went to him and I said, Listen, I don't want to be a real estate agent. And I think I would have been a dang good real estate agent. And I think that it would have been my life. I would have worked hard, I would have served people, I would have sold a lot of houses. But I felt called to do something more. And he wasn't happy at first. He supported me like he always does. So what do you want to do now? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm always up to things in my marriage and in my life. And I said, you know, I've always wanted to help people and share about the trials that I've gone through. And within closing those doors of knowing that I didn't want to be a real estate agent, not turning back, 
I was able to meet one of my dear friends and mentors, the compliance queen of real estate. Does anybody know Cheryl Knowlton or heard of her? <laughs> and she was also the president of NFA. And I was able to be a part of the National Speakers Association, I was able to have a podcast started from dear friends that stepped in and helped me with my website. All of these things that I had no idea what I was doing all showed up within a matter of time because as we close one door, another door opens. Um, since I haven't known, all I know is real estate agents are so day cool and down to earth. And I, and I think I got that vibe as entrepreneurs. I don't know all the struggles you go through day to day, but I thought I'd pull this slide out from other people who work with real estate. And I'd love for you to throw in a few thoughts, but real estate pain points, the confidence to sell your, yourself and pressure is a commission days with no income guarantee. The second one is balancing work and home life. Figuring out how you can have that balance, right? Stress of dealing with other agents and loan officers that are not skilled at communicating. Has anyone ever dealt with that? Mm -hmm. um, working 24 seven and learning that life is a marathon and not a sprint. How many of you guys are sprinting a lot? Guilt. Guilt about finding time to play, to be with your families, to travel. Guilt about working and feeling like you need to work more. Is that one that you guys feel? And that the rules are constantly changing and that you have to kind of abide by them. Does anyone have any other thoughts that you could share to add to the list? Anything that comes to mind? Or do we get a lot of them? That's a lot of them. I think, I think the confidence, it's kind of what the thing what you're talking about. I think some agents don't <clears throat> have the experience. And so they beat themselves up too much when they're new that so-and-so is not going to want to use them or trust them because they don't have the experience or the knowledge. And I think that holds new agents back a lot from really getting their feet planted and getting going. Is that confidence to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've noticed with, with you, um, with real estate agents is that typically they're, they're working on themselves. You know, I see their mindset. They're trying to build that confidence, um, better their life and growth. They've got to work through communication skills. So it's a beautiful thing. This is one of the quotes that I want to share with you when I love and live my life by. Thomas Edison holding the light bulb, the light bulb and says, I have not failed. I just found 10,000 ways that it didn't work. He never quit. He never quit. And did people doubt him? Absolutely. Did they believe that he could have the light bulb that we're looking in here at this gorgeous building with all those lights? I mean, those lights are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what if you would have quit? How many people said you failed, you failed, you failed? He never failed. He just found another way. What I realized is I never failed by attempting to pass that real estate test. It showed me how strong it was. It showed me my grit. It showed me my weaknesses and it showed me my strengths. And most of all, the gift of that was it showed me what I really want to do and the passion of that. And I don't know if anyone's ever read the book, Thinking, uh, Thinking Big, Brian Tracy, but that is a really cool book because one of the quotes in there is that people have it all mixed around. People work their whole lives and work hard so they can do what they love. What if you can do what you love and then live your life? What if we had it mixed around and, and we just got to do the things that we love and that could become a part of who we are, right? And part of you guys are doing the real estate. There's a reason that you do it. There's a reason that you feel called to it because when we, when we do what we love, people feel that. They want to be a part of our teams. They want to be a part of our group. So thinking of that as I've never failed, I took down 10,000 ways that didn't work. So the next one, I made this up and then I made last minute because so I'm kind of like, I mean, I'm trying to be funny. I'm not as funny, right? I was like, confident people are like holes. And then I thought I could have changed it to COVID. Confident mm -hmm. people are like COVID. They're contagious. Some might avoid you. Others aren't afraid. And some want to help or attach to you. And what I was saying by that is confident people, you're either going to bring and exude and, and attract people or you might push some people away and guess what maybe they're not your people so i want to share something with you that i absolutely love it's called this this quote from oprah winfrey great communication begins with connections i want to take you guys about those three things because in that what i'm teaching you is there's three things we can do that start with the letter d the first one is it's a decision to become confident we get to make a decision to become connected and to have connection and to have better communication the second one is distraction. So when our brain tries to tell us, like with that experience with, with the test, 
that we can't do it, we get to distract our brain, kind of like in a room full of kids or adults, right? I love my ADHD because it's like, we're all in the room and it's like, hey, check out that bird, right? Everybody looks out there and, and say the tantrum that's three years old, the, the baby that's throwing the tantrum, all of a sudden what happens? They stop throwing that tantrum because they're distracted. Their brain's distracted. And then when they want to go back to the, ah, throw the tantrum, it's not the same thing because they distracted their brain. So the first thing is make a decision. Second thing is distract ourselves. And the third is to do it. Just keep going and attempting. So great communication begins with connection. I would love to share a story with you. Um, did anybody go to the parade of homes or hear about the parade of homes in Park City just barely? No? Okay, so they had a Park City one. This was actually the first house that was there. Did anybody, nobody saw? Um, my husband and I got to see several houses and they were incredible. But for some reason, I had a feeling to come back around because we were on our way home from celebrating our 25th anniversary, which is awesome. And we got to stop at this house. It was the only remodeled house in the great house. And so we get to this house and it was super cool. It was like, I mean, just really vintage and different floors and levels and designs amazing. And my husband, he, he doesn't talk very much, he's back here, and he might joke around and say, well, I would talk more if you didn't talk so much. Because <laughs> I do all the talking, right? And, and so, but he really doesn't say a lot of words, but we're in the creative homes, and we walk upstairs to the bathroom, and he turns to this lady, and he says, hey, I never, ever, ever forget a face. You are on the news. And she said, yes, I, I am on the news. Um, nice to meet you. She walks over from across the room, and she sticks out her hand to him, turns her face directly to my husband and shakes his hand, eye to eye, like holds eye contact for like three to five seconds. And my husband, I mean, he's really good with people, but I can tell he was a little, I don't know if it was, that was kind of a weird interaction. Like she just kept looking in my eyes. <laughs> and I, and it was, it was kind of cool because she made her way across the room and just looked at me. It made me feel kind of important. Like I wanted to do that with my employees and the people but not many people do that anymore, with that eye contact. So afterwards, I'm thinking, this is Carrie Cronk, I wanna to get to know her. So we're walking around the house, we're standing up by this incredible stairway, kind of reminds me of this beautiful setup. So we come up the stairs, and all of a sudden I hear someone come up the stairs on the side where I'm talking to her, and Tanya, how are you? And comes and gives me this great big hug, and I look over, and my husband's like, oh my gosh, he knew who he was, his name is Ben, Ben Carr, Ben Carr. Has anybody heard of Ben? He's in real estate. And Ben was just recently on my podcast, and he shares an amazing story. Well, I he's, what are you doing here? And I said, well, we just celebrated our anniversary, and we are, we just want to check out this amazing house. And he pauses, and he says, well, this is my house. I said, oh, yeah, really? So I'm standing here, and I said, well, let me introduce you. I said, this is Ben Kerr, who's on my podcast, a fairly good friend of mine, and this is my new friend, Carrie Cronk, from Channel 13 News. So we're all standing together in this circle. And my husband's right there with us. And she said, she looks over and he starts to explain. Well, you know, I said, you didn't tell me about any of this on, your, on the podcast. He said, well, we didn't have time. Mm -hmm. He said, what, what it is, is I've done about, I've done a lot with real estate. I've done about 250 flips on all the houses, on all these houses. And every time I sell a house, the money that I sell from the houses goes to kids with this crouton um, syndrome, a disorder that I have to help with the facial abnormalities that they have. Because a lot of what he was explaining in the podcast I do is they have to get this reconstructive surgery just to be able to breathe, to sleep, to all of these wonderful things. And he's an incredible wrestler too. So anyway, we get talking. This is the coolest part about that quote. Great communication begins with connection. Carrie Cronk leans over, hearing the story, says, hey, do you want, let's do a story on the news. Do you want to do a story? And of course, Ben's like, yeah, I'd love to. So actually yesterday, Ben texted me and said, hey, I just did a story on um, Tuesday. We're doing a story on Tuesday with Carrie Crump on the news. So if you guys want to follow that, it's going to be incredible about great problems and his story. But what I want to share is that connection piece. First, I was grateful for my husband saying something. Because oftentimes if we don't speak out and connect and say things, we miss opportunities. Would you guys agree? Mm -hmm. So I was grateful for him saying that to her. And then second of all, um, grateful for the way that things show up. Don't you agree sometimes things just align? Like when you're in that right space and in the flow, amazing things can show up in the line. For him to walk up the stairs, for him to be that house, and then for that experience to happen that way was just absolutely, absolutely amazing. And it reaffirms that great communication starts with that connection. So I wanted to share that. Okay, 
Does anybody wear glasses in here? No, there's a few of us. Or contacts. No, used to. Yeah. Oh, the lucky ones that get the LASIK. Well, here's a little bit about me. <laughs> was that what it was? Yeah. Okay, hey, I'm jealous. So <laughs> I, I, I have worn glasses since I was a little girl. I have poor vision pretty much throughout my whole life. And I remember my mom, like back in the day, you didn't do contacts for little kids. So I got these glasses. You guys, I was so excited. They were the big, like plastic pink ones that were so cool. And there was a little rhinestone down the bottom. And I thought, you know what? I looked so good. And I was going into junior high and I was rocking it and feeling good a little bit before those other stages, but the pictures look kind of similar. Um, but here's the deal. I put on those glasses and I remember one of these kids looked over and said, oh, those are the most tedious glasses I've ever seen. You look so ugly. And I thought, look like me. And I joke with my kids that I used to pass on the disease to please with them, right? I wanted to please everybody and make everybody like me. So what did I do? I took off those glasses. I put them to the side. And I sat there and I squinted and I couldn't see what was going on and I felt so disconnected. I felt like I couldn't communicate and I couldn't connect because I couldn't see what was going on. And so when I heard this story, it was pretty um, amazing to me because I have a really good friend she has a daughter, this is not her daughter, but that same age that struggles with some eye conditions. And she was looking for a really great doctor. And she said she found someone with an amazing skill set that was highly, highly recommended. She went down to the office, so excited to ask these questions. And said when the doctor came in, he had his paper in front of him, looking down, didn't look up much, hardly turned to her daughter and just started going through what they were going to do, what the protocol was. It's pretty short, pretty curt, just really, and then gets up, walks to the door with the back turned, and she's standing there. Wait, wait, I have some questions that I wanted to ask. He turns around kind of halfway and says, tries to answer him. By the end of that, she felt completely like not important. She didn't get the answers to the messages that she was hoping for her daughter, and it really bothered her because she thought, you know, he's supposed to be one of the best. We were really anticipating this. So she went talk to a friend about it. That's what us girls do, right? We go and talk to all our friends when we have problems. <laughs> do the guys do that or no? Oh. <laughs> so anyway, she goes and talks to her friend. She says, well, I have this incredible, absolutely incredible eye catcher. It's like an hour and 15 minute drive from where you're at. Would you be interested? She said, absolutely, I would be. Well, I, mean, I would. I'm hesitant after what happened, but yes, I will. So she scheduled the eye appointment and she went back in. They made the long drive and they walked into an office that was open and that was filled with light. And she was greeted at the front with smiles from the staff, eye to eye contact. When they called back her daughter to the room, the coolest, coolest part was the doctor greeted her at the door and started singing to her all these Elsa songs and Disney songs. Like, come on, sweetie, come back, princess, is what he was calling her. It was, it was lit up and beautiful. And she goes to go sit in the seat. And he's standing there singing her songs, checking her eyes. And in front of her has a chart of what the eyes look like. And with that, I realized I have that confidence clicker going the whole time. <laughs> with that, she... Um, she she was so excited to hear about her eyes. She was looking at you know what her eyes looked like and what was going on. And then he turns to mom and says, do you have any questions that I can answer? And she turned around and she said, yes, I do actually. I have this question, this question about my daughter, what can we do? And he took all that time. In that moment that I want to share this story and the reason is both doctors have the same skill set. Great communication begins with connection. And the minute she walked in the door, she felt glad she got seen. He let her know that there was nothing wrong with her, that she was special and that her eyes and this is what was going on. And what made that difference was that great communication starts with connection. That's what got the sale. That's what got the sale. Is it buzzing it anybody? So I want to talk about the seven seconds of communication. Do you know that you have, and this is like studies show, that we have seven seconds. If we go back to that, our energy introduces us before we even speak. We have seven seconds to show up for someone to already kind of make an assumption who we are. Do you guys believe that? Have you heard those studies? That's kind of hard, right? Because what if we're having a bad day, but what does that look like for communication? Are we standing up strong? Are we looking at people in the eyes? Are we having that eye-to-eye -eye contact? 
Um, that is just one of the most important things that we can do. The second thing is the smile. And what I want to say about that seven seconds, I'm, I'm laughing because here is the deal with the smile. My kids get so hyped because they're like, Mom, why do you say such corny jokes? But my daughter will wear something. I'll say, hey, what's the most important thing that you can wear? I don't know, Mom. I'm like the smile. Oh. So they'll laugh, you know. I have teenagers to little ones. The next one that um, that is kind of funny is, you know, we, we just make jokes about it. I say, smiling girls are the happiest, right? When you're smiling, you know. Um, well, here's one. This was a good one. What's the most important curve on the body? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and this was the one that almost threw him over the edge. But if our if we're not saying a word, because going back to that little girl as a baby, I wasn't speaking at first. I was just engaging with my energy. That if that is the most important self state of the kids, remember who you are. Oh my god. You're a smiley Riley. Oh my gosh. And that one got thrown over the edge. <laughs> but the deal is if you can stand. And, and have that magnetic personality, have that openness about you, people are drawn to you. People want to, they're invited into your world. Do you guys, do you guys did that resonate with you at all? Okay, I want to tell you a really, really cool story. Let's take a peek at the time real fast. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So the farmer's market, um, when I had this opportunity to be a mom, finally be a mom, I lost twins before my son was born. I got the opportunity to have him. Even though I put that weight on and everything, I just was so grateful to have him. And I made a decision that I was going to quit a job working at the University of Utah. A great job that I loved. And my husband was an only child. His parents worked for the government. I mean, it was definitely not part of the plan for me to just be home. But we were so grateful to have this baby when my husband was 27 and I was 20. And so I decided I'd stay home. And everybody wants to tell you everything to do about kids. You know, they need to sleep and do this, right, when you're a new parent. And um, and so he would nap a couple times a day. And in this time, I found myself, um, thought, well, maybe I'll start making some jewelry. I'll just make some jewelry and see what happens. And every day, I just create some jewelry. I'd go online, I'd look at a few things, and it wasn't as big back then, but I'd buy some beads. And then I heard there was an opening at the local farmer's market by my house. And so I packed up my little guy in this little car seat, five, three months old at the time, and I'd bring him down with me and I'd set up my table, my jewelry. And people would come up to my table and they would say to me, so tell me a little bit about you. Why, why do you do this? And I said, well, I used to work up at the U. I loved it. I loved working with the students. And being home has been a little hard, a little sad. It's like a little depressing. I'm missing it. I'm definitely missing the communication and the connection. And um, so I just wanted to get out with people. And so I started creating these children. Well, they'd start buying from me. And then they bring their friends. Like the next week, they bring two or three friends. And then they'd say, and I'd remember their names. And we'd talk, and hey, how's it going? And they'd be wearing the jewelry. And then they'd bring their, bring their friends and say, hey, my friend here's daughter's getting married and wondered if you could do the whole line of jewelry. I say, Heck yes, mm -hmm. I can. And then, or we need some um, bracelets for all the party bags for the birthday. Okay, awesome. So I would do this, and I loved, loved the connection. I remember their names. Before I even realized it, I was making more money than I was at working at the university couple nights a week. And one day I just said to my husband, I said, TJ, I cannot believe this. This is so cool. You know, I, I'm making all this money. I'm working a couple days a week and I'm doing what I love with people. And he just looked at me. He's always the realist. He always keeps me in line. Maybe do that. <laughs> so I'm kind of this visionary with his big thoughts. And he said, you know, Talia, I watch you. When I come to the market after work, see the way you look at them. You look them in the eyes. You remember their name. You remember their grandkids. You remember the story that they told you. They're not buying your $7 jewelry. They're not buying your $5 bracelets. They're buying you. They're buying what you want to give and serve and give to them. So I want to share with you why do you do what you do? What do you love? What do you feel called to do in your word? I want to be a real estate agent. We can do three things. We can make a decision. What's your why? Do you want to be more confident? Do you want to have better connections? This is a choice. People can, if your energy introduces you before you speak, 
Have you ever met the ones that are like, get the heck away from mm -hmm. Back off. It's a choice to decide to distract from what isn't truth and to keep going forward. So a decision, I, I want to be a confident real estate agent and I take time for self-care, which I feel like is a really important piece for you guys. How do you take time to fill your own buckets? For all of us, right? Great communication begins with connection. It's a choice to choose to connect with people. Because we can't, you know, and, and maybe some will connect and maybe they won't, but we get to choose if we want to. And then my energy introduces me before I even speak. I have seven seconds to make my introduction. Which once you make your introduction and you are who you are, right? They know you, they trust you, they feel it. So I just want to tell you guys how, how grateful I am to be here today and to share a little bit about my journey and how I love to inspire people that I can do this, I know you can. And that real estate agents are probably my favorites because you guys are open to learn and you're open to keep going and you don't give up. Somehow, maybe you guys only had to pass the test once, but you never gave up. So I'm <laughs> excited for you. And here's just a little QR code if you want to put in SOAR. Um, it'll send you like a little worksheet with three ways to have more effective communication in your business. And you can get a little bit for today. I want to say thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Hey, before, hey, before she wraps up, anybody got any questions or comments on Zoom? You guys want to participate on, on mute yourself? You're welcome to... And I'll let it see you. I would absolutely love to answer any questions. Yeah. Or here in the room. Did anyone have any thoughts? <clears throat> you have an awesome husband. Sounds like you lean on him a lot. He's solid. I mean, the truth is, I think in all marriages, you've got someone that keeps you grounded and keeps you solid. And honestly, I don't know if he'll tell you this, but I pull him along and I try to, you know, you've got to have the balance. Yeah. True. Thanks for sharing that. Any other thoughts you guys have? You're awesome too, by the way. I didn't even make you out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You just that was a given. Right? <laughs> hey, one thing I like, you said it several different times. Um, you know, confidence is important in everything we do, especially in our relationships and in those first meetings, wherever. Because if somebody doesn't feel that if you're confident in your skills and your abilities to represent them, protect them, and take care of them in a transaction, speaking of real estate or whatever they're less likely to move forward with you, right? So you mentioned several different times, the first step is to decide that you want to be. Because a lot of us, I was talking actually a little bit before the training about something that I was listening, a book I was listening to, and the premise that we were discussing was, a lot of us think that we're at where we, we're, we're in the place we are because we're a product of our past. It has pushed us to this point because of our experiences and everything. But consider that maybe where we're at because of the decisions we've made of who we want to be, and we're being pulled instead of pushed. So we're, we're being pulled in the direction that we want to obtain for ourselves. So some of us have made a shitty decision. You know, we haven't decided that we want to be where we're truly going to be happy. And we're looking backwards and say, well, I am, I am the way I am because of a, B, and C because of the way, because of this and that. Once you let go of that and decide that's not me anymore, I'm going to be something different, and you realize that you're being pulled towards that new vision you have for yourself, it kind of changes everything. So just decide you want to be confident and get pulled in that direction. Right? Well, I love that. And loving yourself exactly where you're at. It doesn't matter. We're all on this journey of working. And I think what you were saying with that is when you believe in yourself and you trust in yourself, other people feel that. They want to come to you. They want to work with you. You've, you know, you've shown them that that you're good at it. One thing I found is comparison. Like if we start to compare ourselves to other real estate agents and other companies and where they're at and who's selling more houses, right? It's just, it goes back to that. It's a thief of joy. Like just focus on what you're on and think of the client's needs and what you, and what you have to offer and then things flow. The more I push, I don't know if anyone feels this, but the more I am pushing and I have been there, I still am learning the more I push people away, but the more I open that up to that slow energy, people come, houses show up, listings show up. Do, would you guys agree that that yeah. feels good, right? So that just reminded me of something that I, I shared in our, our team meeting Monday um, about just being yourself, you know, just being yourself and stop that comparison. This quote said, don't chase people, be an example, attract them, work hard and be yourself. The, the people who belong in your life will come find you and stay, just do your thing. I'm not just, just do you.
-hmm. and, and we're good enough as we are. Yeah. And we don't have to be perfect to be confident. We can choose right now, hey, this is what we want. I want to be more confident in myself. I want to be more confident in what I do. And that's where that growth comes in, right? The learning. If we don't feel confident in something, keep learning and seeking. You yeah, yeah. And so another thing to consider is like, if you don't feel like you are confident, just ask yourself, well, what would I do if I was? You know, if I was confident, what would I do? And it might not be easy, but it's easy to, it's easier to imagine yourself performing as if. And so if you, whether confidence is the theme of today, but I mean, uh, uh, anything, if, if you're not how you want to be, how would you act if you were? And that'll lead you. Yeah. And, and thinking of that, I love what you said, because if you don't feel confident, think of people you know that are confident. How do they show up? Think of a confident real estate person that you know, or someone in business that you're like, I love how they do that. And then you get to choose to become. Yeah. Just decide. That's where we come in here. You get to decide, hey, I'm going to show up like that. I like how they do it. Because the truth is, you wouldn't even see that in someone else but learn yourself. Awesome. Thank so, you thank so much. You. Thank you. Thank <laughs> that was you. awesome. Appreciate it. Um, Okay, you guys had a lot of time to grab that QR code. This is another one Ashley put together. This is just going to lead you more to her contact information. Um, so thank you, Talia. That was awesome. Um, for you, those of you that are on Zoom, um, we're going to take a minute and hear from our sponsor that, that brought in lunch for us today. So Jason Hall, you're up. You first credit union. Well, first, welcome back. So he's going to tell us a little bit about who he is and what he does and how he can help you guys. So uh, you're up, man. Let's thank you. give you a slide. Give you a slide. <laughs> Tell you. Thank you. That was awesome. I got seven seconds, I guess, to introduce myself. <laughs> Food waiting. It's hot. It's ready. It's, um, so uh, I can talk about myself. I don't want to, but I'm with you first, also known as University of Utah Federal Credit Union. We kind of rebrand and kind of be more inclusive with everybody, your counties and things. Um, I initially came a few times with this group with Louie and I wanted to give back a little bit and participate. So thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, the realtors in here, I, we actually had a promotional product which 5.75 and 30 year fixed rate purchase. That money's almost run out. But when I started, signed up for like a month ago, we had like $40 million. Mm -hmm. So when I come talk to you guys, like we got 40 million, 5.75, we got a few, we got a little, a little bit left. However, we have some other cool products. Um, why would you use a credit union over your preferred lender? Um, we're local. I have a lot of stories about that. We're local underwriting processing. We've been doing this for 20 years. We have a 100% first time home buyer product, no money down, no income limits, no mortgage insurance. So if you have a first time home buyer with no money down, we can help them out. Um, so 100% financing with no mortgage insurance? Yeah. Boom. Well, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> Rates uh, about 7.6. That's obviously going to be, you know, it's a higher amount of the rate, but it's 7.6. The, the, the fixed rate, no mortgage insurance. It's a good deal. No, and, and no income. If you talk housing, you have like income limits and things. We have no income limits on that. So if you got a person that has a new job, high, high paying job, no money down, this is the product that I have. Lot loans, uh, 80% up to $300,000. We have one, uh, 25% up to $600,000. So lot loans, one time construction, two time construction, or very good in construction loans. Jumbo products, anything that's like portfolio, all grid conforming, which we're good at as well. And weird stuff that other people can't do. So I know a lot of realtors have their preferred lenders that I'd like to use, but give us a chance if you have weird stuff that you've come across that you can't do. Happy to help you earn your business. Awesome. So any questions for me? Yes. You have an option there for the people that want a mobile home without the land. No land? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's how most of them are. I like how mobile home, like it's not a mortgage, right? On, on a car, I thought on a pedal park on a lot. Yeah, no, on the mobile home. Oh my God. Is that the pop now because the people can't afford other stuff? And so I'm just curious if that would I think if it's been if it's been removed, if the axle's been removed and it's on a permanent foundation. Well, it's, it's you don't need the land though. It's, it's, a, it's, it's like a lot fee. Yeah, you know. I think so. So you can still do all the there's still more I mean, got it, I believe, yeah. Can you check into that? Yeah. Do you have any year restrictions? That would be a benefit. Any what? Year restrictions, like a lot of I'd like 70 with 76 on that, yeah. 76, 78. Well, yeah. I don't, I don't do a lot, I don't feel a lot of those, but it's a project that come back with a small, it's, right. that's going to be a thing. I can just say in there, 
It's just a different type of loan because it's personal property. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You actually yeah, close it's 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 totally, You can't have rents for any It's different. So mm -hmm. um, I'm just, there's not a lot of people that do, but there's a lot more popping up. And so I'm just curious about that. I don't know. That's a good question. I'll look at that, but you know, it's a long task. But I have done mobile homes. That, the foundation's been you know, put in place yeah. on a lot. Yeah. We've done those. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. Play a lot. Like an eon ago, you worked with Mark Western, right? No, no, Mark Western. Uh, no, see, in the business side, no, he, he doesn't worry, just go. But, uh, it's a small world. I just started here a few months ago. I've been doing about 20 year loan mortgages from citywide home lending to US Bank to like small brokerages, the whole thing. So I came over here because these guys really want to get they want to be a big name in the valley or the help. And they give us like they're trying, they're trying to make them. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see. It's been pretty good. I mean, I got a loan on Thursday. I, I said, Hey. We we do five point seven five percent thirty year fixed. Guy comes say, I'm under contract. You got my appraisal done already. We switched it over on Thursday. It's building on um in a week. So we can do it. We can we can move fast. We're not. I know we have a stigma of being slow and crappy, but so far so good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Anybody on Zoom have a question? Yeah. Step five seven five. You said conventional and FHA. Conventional twenty percent down. Sorry, it's twenty percent down product on that. Primary residence. Would you do construction loans outside of Utah? No. What was that? Mm -hmm. Sorry. The 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 twenty percent down primary residence. We're at five point seven. It's six percent now. Six percent thirty year fixed rate. Oh, is that the one that your promotional product is almost right? Yeah, it's almost right now. We might okay. come back. We get we got about five bucks for that. We got we got we got about five we got five million now. enough to we got five million. I'm the first thing of five million. Let's go pretty fast. So when Anthony signed up, I think we announced it, and yeah, it, it's been really popular product. We're going through it pretty quick. Oh, yes. good deal. So hey guys, yeah, I guess you know some of the stuff that he said. Um, uh, use them as a second opinion. Uh, you, yeah. you need products that credit unions can do. A lot of brokers yeah. don't do them. Whatever. That's one advantage uh -huh. is like this is what we do. Um, some of us think of the disadvantage is like, well, we don't do that, right? Like you ask about outside Utah. That's enough. So sometimes what they do is unique though. Yeah, we do uh, the normal stuff too. Uh, also, we service everything we get. Almost everything we service. So your clients that are buying houses, they'll. Pay the mortgage with us. They have a question. They can contact us directly. We're here local. That's nice. A lot of people actually like that. It's just kind of weird. Yeah. Spent several years at the U.S. Bank, and I was like, "Why do you want to get a like our rates are high, right?" But they like it. So, um, yeah. happy to earn your business. Awesome. Happy to be here. Can you be able to stick around for a minute? Yeah, of course. Cool. And you there's food. About lunch. You better have some. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lots of food. I don't know. I don't know. I hope you guys like barbecue. I don't know. Oh, uh, absolutely. Okay, cool, guys. Um, my last slides, Ashley's put in here just so that you all registered for this class. Um, Ashley does a good job keeping up almost a couple of months on what's coming up. Uh, so you can register on that page. And then some of you subscribed as well. So, you know, if you did subscribe, sometimes people subscribe. It's like, yes, I want to go to all Talia's stuff. Um, she doesn't come every week. <laughs> so the subscription is just more to be notified weekly of what is coming up. So you can go back to that initial page that I showed you. I'll go back to that one really quick. Um, and you can pre-register and we will have to tell you back. And uh, you can get reminders to um, your email and text when that's coming up. So that's it. That's all we got. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See y'all. See you, Kim. See you guys on Zoom. Thanks for hanging out to the end. Appreciate you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's super good. Hi, okay. Janice. No, it's on there. Hi, Liz. Thanks for showing up. Awesome. Bye, Liz. Bye, Nikki.